Hey everybody, Mark Torregrossa, Chief Meteorologist at MLive.com in the lovely Bay City, Michigan hub. If you've never been to Bay City, we've got great restaurants and even better beverage places, don't we? So check out MLive.com slash weather. We get, we get job shadowers like Krista from John Glenn. This, this is the head honcho. This is Rob Clark, head of... Bay City Hub, or what is your title? Yeah, I'm the editor of the Bay City Ed, Times. Yeah. And the Bay City Times, yeah. Bay City Hub. So they're seeing what Periscope is all about. Chime in. We're going to check out the storm that sunk the Edmund Fitzgerald. There's a lot of interesting things that I found. We were able to actually recreate the weather back then with modern day technology. So that's what we're looking at today. Because remember, 1975, we had two computer models to look at. And well, I was pretty young, actually. I didn't look at the computer models back then, but we had two computer models, and I actually have a post on MLive tomorrow about looking at what it looked like back then. But let's go to this, show you some things that happened. First off, this is an animation in my post. Remember, you can go to MLive.com slash weather, and here's a post that I have uh, recreating the monster storm that sunk the Edmund Fitzgerald. By the way, anytime you want to chime in with a comment, or question, go right ahead. That's what this is all about. So, here is the modeled wind direction and speed at the time the Edmund Fitzgerald sunk at around what they say is 715. I'm wondering if it was about two hours earlier than that. This is using modern data and notice this purple area right here. All that purple area is an area where winds were over 58, 50 miles an hour, and the direction was out of the west. And that's actually important because what they anticipated was a wind out of the north, northwest, and most of the climate atlases and all of the experience of all of the veteran uh, sailors on the Lake Superior at that time said that in a really strong north wind, the waves would come out of the north and crashed to the south and that's what they planned on but this was the big change it was actually a west wind and the waves were coming from west to east which was actually a rare case i found in a in a, a wave atlas that that only happens one percent of the time when the waves are over 25 feet so that was the big shocker now this is actually the wave height the significant wave height and direction of the waves at the time the Edmund Fitzgerald theoretically sunk. And you can see 7.8 meters, which translates to 25.5 feet at 7 o'clock. That's because of that strong westerly wind that was building. But remember, this is one thing I want to remind you. That is a forecast of the uh, significant wave height. Significant wave height is the average height of the top third tallest waves. It's not the tallest wave, okay? It's the top third tallest waves. A rogue wave, which is like a one in a hundred or one in 500 wave, is one and a half to two times the significant wave height. So you got 25 foot waves, there was probably a 37 foot wave at some point, up to possibly a 52 foot wave. And just think what that would look like. I mean, I've been out on Lake Huron where there's six foot waves and it's kind of scary. Just think what a 52 foot wave would look like. Here in Bay City, we've got a planetarium, a tall building next door. I don't know how tall it is, but a 52 foot wave has to be taller. Would you say no, absolutely. It, right over it? Yeah, I mean, just right over it. how incredible that would be. Uh, Here's just a little re recreation of the storm. This is actually the surface maps that we looked at in 1975. There was the storm down in Texas, or Kansas. Here's Michigan. Here's, the, here's 7 p.m. on the 9th, the storm in Iowa. Then we go to 7 a.m. on the 10th, the storm in Lake Superior. All these isobars, lines of pressure, show the storm rapidly strengthening. And then we go to uh, 7 o'clock at night, the storm moving up, and in come the northwesterly winds. The One of the ships recorded an 86-mile-an-hour wind gust at 4 p.m. in the afternoon. 
So what I'm thinking was there was actually a line of thunderstorms possibly, lake-induced thunderstorms, and the Edmund Fitzgerald probably had a west wind, 86 miles an hour, probably had actually a strong west to east moving wave come right over the top of it. It was 52 footer, then it did come right over the top of it. Here's one last thing I want to show you. They probably took the wrong path, unfortunately, based on the weather and based, uh, the, based on the experience of what to do in this weather. The Edmund Fitzgerald actually took a northerly track because they wanted to avoid the big north to south moving waves. And then when they got down here, they anticipated the north waves, north to south moving waves would be behind them and they would be okay. But the waves actually, as the storm came across Lake Superior, the waves actually came in out of the west right there and came across while they were coming north. If they had actually taken the closer route, they would have been further along, they would have been down here, and they would probably have been there before this massive patch of strong winds came and before that uh, westerly wave hit them. So unfortunately, the weather technology that we had back then didn't, didn't help them out. This was a, a rapidly strengthening storm. And nowadays, actually this is my post tomorrow, nowadays this would never happen. The Edmund Fitzgerald would still be standing there because they would have seen this size storm three, four days in advance, and they would have never left port. So I guess the good news is all of the technology that we use in our tax dollars, that's definitely going into improvements for safety. Um, but it would have been sure nice if we would have had that back in 1975. Hey, Bernie Ng. Yes, sir. Any questions? Well, not questions really, but a lot of hearts coming up when I show the graphics and then the hearts go away when I show you. Hmm. I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> hmm. Well, here's a question. Have we seen anything close to a storm like this since then? Oh, now that, the hearts are coming actually, in. Actually, that oh, is a great hearts. question. That's a great question. <laughs> um, I write about that tomorrow. Yes, we have. 1998, there was a storm that was actually stronger. And in 2010, there was a storm that was stronger. And the interesting thing is neither of those cases, any lives were lost. And in the 2010, that's modern day technology, it was forecast well in advance. And I talk about that. I actually show that in my post uh, tomorrow that yes, we, this is actually, you know, this is not that rare of a storm. We have another storm coming like this on Thursday of this week, probably a little bit weaker, but this is a very typical storm, except for the fact that you got the 86 mile an hour wind. That's probably 20 or 30 miles an hour stronger than your average uh, November gale. Hey, we'll, you, we'll echo mix, uh, Michigan Sweets, RIP Captain McSorley and the crew. You know what, Bernie? I heard you're a great singer. Come on. You heard wrong. Come sir. on. <laughs> I, have a, I have a question. Yeah. I have a question. Yeah. The... The, the average wind speed you said was about 50 miles per hour, or over 50 miles per hour. What is, how does that compare to, like, tornado winds, hurricane winds? I think there's a line in well, Gordon Lightfoot song that it was a hurricane well, that, west wind. One of the ships recorded an 86-mile-an-hour right. gust, and a 74-mile-an-hour gust is a hurricane wind. Okay. So, 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 so the 86, then. yes, there was okay. a hurricane wind. Hey, good question. Yeah, thanks. Way to go. Yeah, babe. All right. That's it for Periscoping about this. We'll do this more. If you got any questions, you can uh, tweet me or Facebook me or comment on MLive. A few people jumped in and want to hear us sing, but uh, no. <laughs> couple bars. No, we need, we, need, <laughs> we need to go to a couple of bars before we do that kind of singing. We need a karaoke machine, so no, we're not going to do that for you. Uh, take care. Have a great day, and get ready for the windy day on Thursday. Lots of hearts. Thanks, everyone. All right. See you guys.